Hey folks, I got surprise, surprise, surprise. I kind of uh, blow one of my little pancake engine, motor, not engine, but motor, who is inside here. And uh, so I replaced it with my spare one, which I was going to use for, for the slicer. But not, now I'm short of motor, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. But uh, normally when I break something, instead of just toss in the corner, toss in the garbage, I take it apart. I have to dissect it. I want to know what I did to it to break it in the first place. If, it, if it's just a, a company error or whatever, or just a bad design. So I took it apart. Which is the same pole motors and polished, kind of stainless, cheap stainless steel, but it's got iron in it and it's, you know, you can stick magnet. And uh, as you can see, you have six magnet, north, south, north, sort. They were glued there. Four was end glue. And this is the other part, which is just a disc of steel, polished steel, who goes in the front of the motor and he makes a little pancake motor. Right, and that was for an electric bike, a small portable uh, electric bike. So, I something I find out about all the little weak points. The again, I'm going to give you a close up. See the two brush, the side by side. So when they spin too fast, it's connect two brush together and, and melt everything up and burn the holder and everything. So that's what went. And also, the glue they use is not really heat resistant. So soon they get warm a little bit, uh, just not not extremely warm. Just at the touch is warm. That glue gets soft and you can pop the magnet. So that's why I have three magnet glues in it. But to my big surprise, the motor, everybody, you know, I'm crazy because I'm making a generator with no iron, right? Well, this technology, you know, like I keep saying over and over, it's not new. They know about this technology. Matter of fact, I got a proof they know about this technology. This little motor, right? Here we go again. This tiny little motor, whoops, right here, right? Now, this is the motor. It's made out of plastic and copper wire coils and you can see the, the the coil see the pattern of the coil into a one eighth of an inch piece of plastic balance and here's a connector and that motor is very powerful way more powerful than most motor so this technology i'm doing it's not new they know about those that that technology for the longest time you know i mean like People were laughing at me. When you turn this motor, when you take the, the shaft and you turn it, it makes electricity immediately. It makes it makes energy immediately. You know? And I was wondering why they were so efficient. I know I was turning that motor and I connect another motor to it and make the motor turn right away back and forth just like it's a robot. That was the generator. At one inch of an inch, one eighth of an inch disc with coils in it. Now I mean, like, call me crazy, you know, but if I wouldn't take that thing, just throw in the garbage, I would never find out about it. I know they have it, but I didn't know they were so blunt about it. You know, that's how stupid we are. It's right in our face. You know, and uh, I, I can't believe it's there. But you know, by doing so, that's what I do since I'm a kid. Since I'm seven years old, I could hold a wrench and start take, taking the part in a screwdriver. I took everything apart around my place. My dad used to scream at me because sometimes I was taking a very good automatic transmission. They save it, you know, in case dirt transmission goes. And in the winter, I used to take everything apart. I wanted to see what the inside looked like. You know, same thing what we we used to do butchering. You know, take you know butchering cows and 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 pigs and 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 anything, moose, whatever. I was so interested in how the inside looked like because you're learning something. It's something you never seen before. It's interesting. It's not the same. It's not a, a, a bloody uh, a commercial has been say a million times. It's something new. You're learning how an animal literally function, and learning how volt behave. It showed me how the volt was made, and. 
But I figured that one out, I figured out also how, what Tesla was using to calculate all that. And I started applying all that together and I discovered only in macro. The way he was calculated, he was just moving volume. Some volume, the same volume, but some is much denser than the other one. And when you throw a dense volume to an exchange, it multiply and amplify and magnified what you're asking for. And that's what Tesla came up with is multiplication and, and, and magnification of energy. It's because it's giving something at a certain volume the other side, but because the volume is very dense, he will react and power on the way back. So the volume you're going to get back from that volume could be a million times more. And that's what Tesla was making his calculation about how much more, when I gave that much volume, what I'm getting back. And he was pretty good at figuring that out. But he knew how to separate, you know, we, uh, to go back a little bit, we, we know about AC, a DC uh, energy for way before Tesla was involved into that lot. He was studying when he was a little kid. He, everything was up with elect, they call it electricity. He, he had to study that. Well, he was curious, just like I was. But he was curious more than I was when I was a kid because I was curious about too many things. So, but, you know, I find out how a lot of things works and how it is made and how much it costs to make it because I research that stuff because that's very important in life. You know, people don't learn that in school. That's why you have stupid today. They go out and pay $50 for something that was manufactured in China, you know, uh, for probably maybe 18 to 20 cents. It's crazy. People walk around with fake diamond. They think they have a fortune. You know, they've been lied to, like everybody else is lying to it. I mean, like, you know, you can't find the truth if it hits you in the face anymore because you don't know what the truth anymore because everything is a bloody lie. You know? And, and you know, and I want, I want to correct something from my last video. When I said Chinese, they're like loc locusts, I meant, I didn't mean the Chinese who came here to live here because they were tired of the country and they live side by side with us and make a living and devil and, and, and grow the, 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 the city and working hard. This is not the Chinese I'm talking about. I'm not very sorry if I, I offended those. It was not my intention. What I'm saying is all the rich little boys from the rich one who starved the population, that's what the, the first one came here and we gave him access to the land and to develop their stuff also. But what I'm not talking about is those little prick they got sent from China here buying some, some, some five or six million dollar house and then suddenly they're controlling what's coming in here. So they're the one controlling the Chinese, the Chinese uh, uh, society in Vancouver because they're controlled by the Chinese mob. I mean, like, you know, I mean, they bring here all kinds of stuff, but I'm not, I didn't say anything bad. I don't want to say anything bad about the person who moved here. And, and, and they raise their children beside our children. And they're making the same, they're having the same struggle. Not those ones. Those ones, they're real people from China. But it's the other one who controls everything around here and, 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 and cram their, their strength. And I mean, you know, who knows what happened in Chinatown at nighttime? Do you ever know what happened there? I sure don't know. I'm not sure there's a shitload of stuff happening in Chinatown every night. Because it's controlled by that mob. But this is the correction I want to do, so I'm only going after the bastards making us and them suffer at the same times. But going back to this here, if you don't know how a vault is made, how you can manipulate it, okay? Einstein didn't know. That's why Einstein is an idiot. He didn't listen. When Tesla tell him your theory or in reality is wrong. But hey, he keep on, 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 on selling his lie and he, you know, they bought it. So I mean, you know, we, we have a way, Tesla shows us a way how to split the positive and the negative of an iron electrons or ferrite electrons, if you want to call it. He, he was very good at manipulate that electron when he find out what DC was and all that stuff. 
you became an expert. You say, oh my gosh, I can do that way better than that, right? All I have to do is, you know, they, they used to use always, you know, laminated, because I guess it was, and, and screwed together, and all you had to do is cut a groove into it and shove a different type of electron material in the groove and press it there and then connect all the end of the wire together. They used to put four groove. That gave that rotor a four field, two south and two north, because it separate automatically the electrons on the, in the iron. So this iron became a very weak magnet immediately with four phase on it. And that's how Tesla separate the electrons. And then he could make that as a motor because now he didn't have to worry about it. If he induced the outside with a current, an alternative current, with the, the AC current he invented, right? Alternative, well, actually it's not alternative, it's called AC current. Alternative is on off and AC current has the AC wave, which is a wave signal. So he, he created that so he could feed his motor which was way more efficient than any other motor at all. Like, you know, all the Tesla's electric motor design, they beat everybody by like, you know, 80% efficiency. So, I mean, like, he know how to do it because he understand what is electrons and how many types of electrons we have. We have thousands of types of electrons because we, all material carry a different electrons. That's why aluminum and copper don't stick together. But Tesla, before he died, after he worked for the government in the United States for almost 21 years, and he came out and he died shortly after that, he, he managed to take the electron of wood and split the electron in one piece of wood, separate the electron, the north and the south, or the positive and negative electrons, and that piece of wood literally stuck to any other wood. It became a wood magnet. And that was done sh very, very, very close to when he died. So we're talking about maybe five or six months before he died. So he had the capability of manipulating all that. But his message has been right in our front of our face. All we have to do is look at his work. Not looking at his goddamn garbage paper we're getting in book. Because those are literally a lie. Right? Look at his work. You know, it's called that reverse engineering in your mind. Take that, look at it, and then make it run inside your head. And why is running? And ask that question and answer it before you ask another why. Also, always answer the why question. Why it's run? Answer the question. Then you're going to come up with another question. Answer that one. One at a time. Don't jump it. I jump a few and I say, you know, it, it, took, it cost me time. All you do is put you back into the starting line again. So you don't want to step the why you have. You've got to stop. Stop doing what you're doing and answer that why question before you go back and, and, and testing again and, and running other stuff to, to learn more about it. So, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just too bad, people. They don't understand we having way more than one pair of electrons in this world. Way more than one pair. And I will have probably, you know, millions of pair of different types of electrons, which you all have a small effect on each other. But uh, also uh, communication, you know, uh, digital communication require, you know, is a signal with, with the absence of electrons. That's what is instant. That's what is so fast. It don't get distorted by time because you have nothing to stop them. You have no electrons. Now, analog had electrons in that communication. They were literally sending wave, and they had, you know, a signal, and it would carry electrons. But they were slow, because now you're moving a body. You know, if the body, I mean, you know, if the body, if you have no no weight on your body, then it's easy to move. So you remove all the electrons. So you have literally no weight. You know, and that's the true of true gravity. Remove all the electron of anything and gravity of this planet will not account for this weight anymore. It will not be bearing on the weight, on, on the gravity of the earth gravity because it have no electrons. You know, I mean, look, we've been doing that. Like, what do you think is going on when you're the old day when we have a fax machine? Beam me up, Scotty. 
You take a piece of paper with a picture in it, you put it in the fax machine, it scans it, it breaks it down, it creates a code on it, it compresses it two or three times and it bursts it out. Jeez, that almost sounds like beam me up, Scotty, because guess what? It reappears thousands of miles away and then a guy's fax machine. You got a fax. Oh, you press, boom, you, there's the picture. It moved a thousand miles away without traveling. But it traveled through time because, you know, he had, it took a little while because it had to go through wires all the time. But now it doesn't because now we have resonance. And then just for example, if you understand resonance, then you know what the optic cable work on. Light. Optic cable work with light. Hmm. Light. That does not resonance to you. Oh, yeah, light. Yeah, resonance. That's how we're working with. All, everything is about resonance. But you have to understand, resonance is not a sign signal. It's what you don't see. And much you make out of that, more potential you got. And you have to know how much resonance it takes to make a hurt. You know, because without resonance, you have no hurt. Without no hurt, you have no volts. Because it's all tied up. Volt is a volume where the earth is to convert itself to a volt. You have to make the step. You get a whole lot of resonance on a on time, on time zone. And then it's got a jump now. So soon that volume of resonance hit a wire, a copper wire, aluminum wire, whatever, stainless steel wire, it makes volts. It converts the resonance into a volt. And then you can use that volt on the outside to do whatever you want. You can convert that to whatever you want. But if you don't know how to make a volt, how the hell you're going to try to manipulate and create something, uh, you know, efficient on any type of work in electricity or electronics or whatever, you can't. So, I mean, this technology is not new. They have it, the big corporation have it. Obviously, China's got it, right? So, what the fuck they got we don't have? This, because we're stupid, right? Obviously, because I find out, I, when I opened that up and I saw that, you know, for half an hour, I was, I feel like a jackass. It was, I had those motors in my hand for years. You know, that's not new. Those little fold-out electric bike, when you travel, you can travel with your bike, when you get someplace, you put, and fold it, and that thing is, goes 36 volt, and it lasts for half a day, and you can move around. That's old technology. And they have it. And then people laugh at me with a drum motor. So I still have, I mean, you can't find for the, for the amperage you put into it, you can't find any motor that's got more torque than, than, than a drum motor. It's that simple. I mean, you test it out yourself, you know. And now we're having a few people that almost getting into understanding what I'm trying to say for the longest time. We need, we don't need, we need a, a controller who can actually push out volts. More volts, more a frequent uh, resonance. The volt is a pile of resonance. It's a it's a volume of resonance. So more volt you got, more resonance you got. Like you know, to turn this light on, it cost me 120 volts, right? To run one of those tiny little ball there, right? Those are, are, are plasma bulb or, or neon bulb they call it, right? They flicker in your in your extension cord. Well, those little bulb. They use no amp whatsoever. That's what it costs nothing when you get your extension plugged on. You see a little red light flickering, right? Because they don't run on amp because they're not connected together. They run on resonance. And the resonance make the little thing glow red because it creates a plasma. So it takes to, to activate those bulbs, it takes a minimum of 100 volt. And you can only put so much into it. And it will burn out because you're going to melt or you're going to burn the glass. The glass will melt over and then it stops. No vacuum, it, it's, no, it's no jumping. So, I mean, like, those, just the understanding how those little guys work, it gave you a pretty good, good idea, you know, what we've been working with, we've been lying to. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. 
I mean, like, you know, it, this, is the, this is the thing we have to really look at and, and do the research and people think it's taking me a long time to come up with something. Well, you know what? You know, I don't see anybody else doing it. Like, you know, I, I do see other, other people who, who's working and they're testing my stuff and they're all coming up with pretty much the same, the same answer I got, you know. We didn't understand what it was coming out of it, but now I know. I mean, like, you know, why I'm see, I, I take picture of stuff around me uh, I know what what the camera would what just an app uh, a, 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 a thermal imaging app and a smartphone and when I was running the machine in my other place we took picture of an entity around us and I got probably about 50 people who actually saw the picture and it just blew their mind away you know I mean like because it's very simple we I'm creating a three dimension three-dimensional dimensional of electromagnetic field. So I can have a magnetic field is in three dimension. Well, everybody said, what's a big deal? We live in three dimension. Well, fuck it, I have news for you. We're not living in a three dimension. We're living in a two-dimensional world with perception. Now, two-dimensional world, it would say, well, it can't be everything look flat. Yeah, remove a person's perception. And they see everything flat because she have no depthness. She can't tell if an object is closer to the other one. Everything is flat, like a like a, like a picture you draw on a piece of paper, two dimension, right? But you throw perception into it, and suddenly that picture be, become, you know, we call them three D, but it's not. It's just perceptions kicking into it, and they say, oh no, I got that tree's farther away than this tree, and oh yeah, it's a mountain behind, and it's space, and all that. You can percept all that. That's called that perception. When you go see a, a movie, and it's a 3D movie, and they give you those glasses, those glasses, all they do, they amplify your perception you already have. That's why they don't work on someone who doesn't have a deadness of sight, have no perception. They don't work. And if you don't believe me, find it out yourself. Okay? Because people have no perception, not because they're colorblind. This is another perception. A lot of people have no perception how far another, or how wide it is and stuff like this. They have no perception. They see the world flat. And they have a problem with that because they see the world flat. They still can maneuver and move, but they don't see the world the way we see it. So, but, uh, you know, it's, that's what research is all about. Now, you know, it's, uh, Really bad. It's not bad, but I mean, like you know, it's into your field now. It's it's like beam me up, Scotty. I mean, like, what could you do with that after you truly understand, you know, how the element work? Since we can take a picture, break it down to data, and send them up, you know, now through the air satellite back over there and produce put all the pigment the the the, the, pic, the pixel back together. I mean. This is like being me up, Scotty. I don't know how you how you, you want to call that, right? I mean, like everything is being moved now with la with no electron. That's why it was so fast. So I mean, like you know, the military play with that. I mean, they playing with that. Like you know, I, you know, same thing with the, the they can go after human body, a special cell whatsoever, and just play that frequency, and that's what people are, you know. The skin want to burn. I thought it was the water that would heat it up first thing, but no, they're just going after one cell in your skin. Because if it was the water, your whole body is 80 some percent water. Your whole body would feel like it's boiling from the inside. So that wouldn't be a good feeling. But just the skin, what I understand is everybody tried this thing, only it feel like their skin is on fire. So they would go after a cell who, who oscillate in a certain, a certain frequency and they bombard that, that frequency out to overwhelm that cell and it starts heating up just like any other cell I mean uh, iron heat up with the friction of a magnetic field a smooth piece of pipe if you spin a magnet it get really hot and there's no friction there but it's a friction from the magnetic field it's getting dragged against the iron constantly so I mean like I'm not the expert on it I mean like you know it, it, it's still a lot more I have to I have to understand, but I tell you right now, for sure. If you do not understand what an electron is, 
you will sit in that box and you will die there. You know, the understanding the electron is probably one of the most, uh, 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 I would say, the most uh, important of the whole research. And uh, you know, I tried the stuff. I you know I, I used myself, and I saw that I, I knew what he could do. You know, I mean, in my own body, uh, and drink, food, anything I put on there, it was changing everything up. You know, and, and, and people trying it, and, it and, and it's been trying out. I mean, it's a lot of people are using this machine, and it does stuff to you. It's because it's in a true dimension, because only a dimension above the one we have can actually come up and take your tissue or manipulate your tissue with not really you feeling it. I mean, that's the only way they can do it because they have no electron. Third dimension doesn't. Because I'm proving it here on this counter, on this bench here. You know? So, more and more, I, I, I'm going down deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole. And uh, hopefully, I won't take a bad turn because in the, that rabbit hole is just not a straight tunnel, believe me. It's many fork many T's you run across which, which way you're gonna go and t you can, I took the, the wrong one a few times believe me and I had to come back right back to I started and try another one because that was not the right one and uh, it happened so but don't be fooled like you know f follow your instant I mean your instant is probably one of the most pure thing you ever gonna own in your whole life is instant you follow your feeling you know if it doesn't feel right, if, you know, inside your chest, if you have a doubt inside your chest, listen to it. Right? If it doesn't feel right, listen to it. You know, if it feels good, believe me, it's like a little voice in your head. Go for it. Every time I listen to that voice, I discover new stuff. Every time I did, didn't do listen to the voice, I either damaged stuff or it's not working at all. So, it called me crazy, but you know, that little voice there has got to be counting for something because it's loud and clear. You know, it screams at you constantly. And that feeling, the gut feeling, yeah, that's the little voice inside was kicking your ass up from the inside. So, I mean, like, you know, um, I don't know what to say anymore, but at least we discovered by breaking something, uh, but, you know, <laughs> Uh, we, we figure out something. I'm not the only one who's been working on plastic and copper with no iron. So, there, I can't be that crazy if I can figure that out on my own. So, um, I'll see you in, another time, and, and uh, when I get more information, um, I will let you know what's going on, guys. So, uh, hopefully, I don't bore you to death. So, see you next time. Bye. Now, it's I want to show you something. I took my generator apart, pulled the motor, and I was showing you the inside of the motor is literally plastic. And it's got tin coil inside the plastic, as you can see, right? They make a loop. They make like a novel loop from behind. You can see the return, right? So, and it's kind of interesting, all the contacts of the where the brush ride the, con the, 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 the conductor I guess they're all tied up together it's no pattern in it everything that's where the two little white the two little yellow dots there and let's see if I can okay those two little dots that's where the points the, the, the brush contact right and I try to figure out the pattern of winding and they all connected all together. They all show connection to each other. Weird. Very weird. But when you spin that motor, which is no iron here, is it, you know, it's it's just copper, right? It's no iron in it. When you spin that inside the casing, right, watch the meter. I'm making volt, DC volt. No, I'm just spinning by hand. So, you tell me now, then a generator have to be 
with iron like really I mean for all the engineer out there you know this is what the motor is and this what could be a generator it doesn't have to be iron so I think we 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 using we're using a technique the wrong way to be able to uh, to do that but that's, that's just what I wanted to show you here so okay here I'm going to give you a very close up of the number of that motor okay that is as clear as I have it now the sample and you're gonna have to if you're looking for it to find those motor to come you make that you're gonna have to go by the symbol so there you go that is the number and that is the symbol pretty clear all right now I'm just gonna explain up take a good look about that motor you know do a little bit of study on it and look what is good and bad um, this is a very good design uh, this motor has got the potential of probably one be one of the best motor beside the uh, drum motor for the thickness and smallest area you can put you can use utilize this motor uh, the only thing I don't really like is uh, it only have tiny little groove on the shaft to secure the shaft inside the motor and there's a very torquey motor so I can see a problem coming out there if it don't, don't come up with a better design on it and the brush system is terrible um, this is I'm gonna give you a, a close look I believe Hang on. Oh, because I got the machine zoom it won't do it all right um, got interrupted there for a minute but that's okay um, now since I explained I'm not too too fond about the little scratch on the shaft there to hold it to the to the main uh, uh, motor part that's what the torque is all about to spin the shaft but also the brush system the kind of uh, the kind of uh, very flimsy um, they have a tiny little uh, thing it goes with a spring and that goes over and that's the brush are too the, the too too close to it too close to each other so that's I don't know, there we go they're very weak so I would make a better much better brush holder but this here is very you know I'm gonna be playing with that I'm gonna create I'm gonna make another motor I'm gonna make all the part to fit that I'll put another shaft I'll build different type of uh, brush holder and uh, I'm gonna be playing with that for a while this motor uh, compared to the drum motor I would say would be either your second best if you want a brush motor straight DC motor and uh, also it can be used as a generator which is a kind of interesting so a lot of tests I like to do in that little motor and also I will try to contact and find out the company who makes those motor in China and uh, I, I, uh, I you know everybody want to do the same thing be my guess you got everything you got you know the number I was showing you before so I mean you know the the way the magnet you know the, the way the motor look is a sample motor pancake motor right so it's nothing to be uh, you know to be shocked about it so all right that's about it so the good and the bad about this this motor is uh, just a little bit of lack of uh, putting some decent shaft holder and better brush system besides that it's a fantastic motor so yeah that was a little bit I wanted to show you I was thinking about that last night because I play with motor like this before and, and I was wondering you know when I was tidying a couple of motor together DC motor you spin one and the other one mimic like you spin really slow the other one will mimic like what are we really doing in here uh, to transfer that little energy and make it and make it move 
And uh, now by understanding the resonances, when we spin that, we're flashing against against the magnet. We are north, south, north, south. The magnet or not there, all you see is the space of the magnet with the magnet with glue because it was some they were loosened there so I took it up and stored it away but they're a very powerful magnet. So the little disc literally spin and the front of the magnet. So the magnet don't move. Smart. That way we don't have to worry about magnet flying away and killing people. But really, all that the magnet does if it's not, you know, all it does is just like a, a solid brush. Just like this iron brush here, right? And all the thing, all that this is doing is riding against those prickles, which create resonance and the wire itself and the wire turn resonance to copper because now he's got a little highway to play with but just saying for all the engineer again I'm not the only one who's playing with this technology now what else do they have we don't know yet that's what you have to ask your question what else because I didn't discover that obviously, right? Somebody else has been using it for a long, long time. Those bikes are probably about five or six years old. So, really? Just saying. <laughs>